Well, I'm back to explain why Brett Weinstein is wrong again. That guy's so creative. What's he saying this time? That spike protein was the core of the mRNA shots. Get two or more of those shots. Now you create IgG4. And the more of the shots you have, the more you, you produce. That IgG4 signal to turn down the immune system is now connected to the presence of spike protein. At a bioengineering level, it is trivial to add spike protein to something else. If they create something that is a frightening weapon that could, in principle, in their warped minds, be used for something useful, the question is, how can you deliver a biological weapon that harms your enemies without harming your population? That's where the IgG4 thing really throws me. Because what they seem to have in the best case, accidentally done is created a vulnerability in the populations that took the mRNA shots that does not exist in populations that didn't. And any time a pathogen shows up with spike, it is likely to trigger the immune system to stand down. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. There's a lot that Brett said that was totally wrong in that rant he just gave there, but I'm just going to stick to IgG4, which is a topic that I've talked about in my previous videos, but it's embedded in longer videos. And so I think having this shorter video on hand as an explanation will be helpful to you. So let's explain. Antibodies are the proteins that are made by certain immune cells in our body that are meant to specifically target specific sites on specific pathogens. Think of it as foreign pathogens like viruses and bacteria having lots of different shapes on them and antibodies being a kind of complementary Lego piece that fits into those shapes. And antibodies are shaped like this. They're kind of a Y shape. The top of the Y, the two arms, are the parts that can find and bind to these specific shapes on specific pathogens. One antibody might be able to bind one piece of a pathogen in a particular place, but another antibody entirely might bind to a completely separate site on the same pathogen. It's a really diverse tool for your immune system. And once it binds its target, the bottom part of the Y shape can do what we call effector functions. And it's at this point where we get into the different kinds of antibodies. The different kinds of antibodies are broken down into different names like IgG or IgM or IgE. And when it comes to IgG, there are four different kinds of antibodies. And within the subclasses of IgG, you basically have different effector functions performed by the bottom part of that Y shape. For example, when an antibody binds its target, that bottom part of the Y shape can interact with another immune cell and start downstream processes of other immune functions. It can make other immune cells produce more signals that can recruit more immune cells to the site that the antibody has bound its target, kind of like calling for backup. It just makes antibodies more of a versatile tool for your immune system. But IgG4 is an antibody subset that doesn't really have a strong function on that bottom part of the Y shape. It doesn't have much effector function, so to speak. And it turns out that following multiple doses of COVID mRNA vaccines, you get a high proportion of IgG4 subtype antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. And this phenomenon is not really seen with other kinds of COVID vaccines. To Brett, that's really spooky and scary, and he tries to make you just as scared as he is. But he doesn't understand any of how this works. IgG4 does not turn down the immune system. These IgG4 antibodies still bind SARS-CoV-2 and neutralize it, which means that it makes the virus unable to actually attach to and enter your cells, which is kind of an important thing for antibodies to do. But IgG4 is able to do this, it's able to neutralize SARS-CoV-2 while not having a strong effector function. So what does that mean? Is that advantageous? The answer seems to be yes. Often what turns out to be really dangerous in a case of COVID is not the first week where virus is actively replicating in your body, but a week or two later when you have a massive immune response and the inflammation damages your organs and you get very, very sick. However, with IgG4, you still get your immune system doing what it's supposed to do, identifying and neutralizing a virus like SARS-CoV-2, but because there's 
a weak effector function on the IgG4 antibody, you're going to be less likely to get this overactive, uncontrolled inflammatory response that has the potential to damage your organs or even kill you. Again, your immune system is doing what it's supposed to do. It's identifying and eliminating a pathogen. It's just that with IgG4, you seem to not get that secondary big inflammatory response. IgG4 is definitely not a signal to lower the immune system like Brett claims. It's an antibody. And in this case, it's an antibody for a specific protein. So it's not going to affect how other immune cells that are attacking other pathogens are going to respond. So you might ask, why is this phenomenon happening with mRNA vaccines and not with other kinds of vaccines? Well, the likely answer is that mRNA vaccines seem to be really good at forming what we call germinal centers. These are substructures in immune organs called lymph nodes that house B cells, and B cells are the parts of your immune system that make antibodies. And we know that the longer lived these germinal centers are, the better the antibody response. Because the germinal center is so long lived and producing antibodies that may or may not be causing inflammation within the lymph node, it seems that you get more IgG4 so that you don't get as much inflammation within your lymph node. We've seen this happen in the case of other vaccines and other infections, so it's not like this is the first time we've seen something like this happen with the immune system. So in summary, IgG4 is just an antibody, and in this case, it's an antibody that does what antibodies do, bind its target and neutralize it. It's just one tool in your immune system's arsenal that your immune system can learn to use after mRNA vaccination against SARS-CoV-2, the virus. In addition to IgG4, your body still has other antibody subclasses that can target SARS-CoV-2. It also has T cells that can target SARS-CoV-2, and it still has innate immune cells that function perfectly well after vaccination. Brett does not understand any of this. He just heard about IgG4 and has completely made up this fantasy about using it in some bioweapon scenario that wouldn't even make a good movie. Seriously, his understanding of immunology is embarrassing, and I've been through this before with him, even though he won't talk to me directly because he's a coward, I've showed him that he doesn't know anything about immunology and have gotten experts to explain these concepts to him, but he doesn't seem to want to listen. Anyway, I think I'm done covering the clips from this podcast for now. It was terrible. These two grown men really struggle to get anything right and make any sense when it comes to topics like science and vaccines. And if they want to do better, they can listen to me or any expert who can explain it to them. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Papers are in the description if you want to read them. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.